Chapter 9 Underneath the moon shadows of the trees, Ma stumbled with weariness. Ba did not know how long they had been walking. With every step he peered at the ground, the light flickering as the lantern swayed in his hand. The forest was full of shapes and shadows, and only barely could he see the faint footprints on the ground. It was like searching for a wrinkle in a flower petal. As Ma tripped, he steadied her with his arm. We should rest, Ba said. Ma shook her head and pulled away angrily. We must keep going. We have to find Min Lee. But you're tired, Ba said, and I am too. We can rest, and afterward we will be able to continue faster. I am not tired, Ma said fiercely. Her irritation seemed to give her energy. If you are tired, you can rest, but I will continue to look for our daughter. We should stay together, Ba said quietly. If you wish to stay with me, Ma said, then you will have to keep going. Ba sighed and took out another candle for the lantern. The light from the lamp kept from the lamp kept away the forest animals, but it could do nothing for Ma's fury. Her resentment seemed to darken with the fading moon. But as they walked, the morning bloomed in the distance. Its light slowly filtered over Ma and Ba through the veil of tree branches, so he could finally blow out the candle in his lantern. He looked at Ma and could see that her bitterness was only sharper in the softening sky. If Minley stopped to rest, Ba said, we may catch up with her soon. When we find her, Ma said, she must know that she is never to do this again. Never. Now, wife, Ba said, Minley did not leave to cause us harm. No, Ma said, her words cracking the air around her. She left to find a fairy tale, never-ending mountain, and the old man of the moon, of all the foolish things. Stories are not foolish, Ba said again, in his quiet way. Says you, Ma said because you're the one who filled her with them, making her believe she could change our miserable fortune with an impossible story. Ridiculous! Yes, Ba said sadly, it is impossible, but it is not ridiculous. Ma opened her mouth again but stopped, for up ahead there was a noise of breaking branches, and it was the sound of someone pushing through the forest. Ma and Ba looked at each other. Min Lee, Ma said. Forgetting their fatigue and frustration, Ma and Ba began to run through the woods. Ma ignored the branches that scratched her, and Ba let his hat fall to the ground as they rushed toward the unseen person. Min Lee, they called! Min Lee! But as they burst upon the figure ahead, they stopped in shock. It was not Min Lee. Instead, Ma and Ba stared open mouth at the goldfish man. Chapter 10 Min Lee gaped at the dragon in front of her, he was brilliant red, the color of a lucky lantern, with emerald green whiskers and horns and a dull stone-colored ball like the moon on his head. At least what Min Lee could see of him looked like that, because he was also half covered by ropes of twine that had been tied tightly around him so he couldn't move, and by the silvery lake of water his tears had formed all around him. Min Lee had always thought it would be thrilling but scary to meet a dragon. Her father's stories always made them sound so wise and powerful and grand. But here was a dragon before her, tied up and crying. Min Lee didn't feel awed by it at all. In fact, she felt rather sorry for it. Can you help me? The dragon sniffled. I'm trapped. Min Lee shook herself and started swimming toward the dragon. What happened to you? She asked. The monkeys tied me up while I was sleeping, the dragon said. I've been here for days. Min Lee swam over to the dragon and climbed onto his back to get out of the water. There she opened her pack, took out the small sharp knife she had brought with her, and started cutting the twine. Why did the monkeys tie you up? Min Lee asked. Because I want to go farther into the forest to the peach grove, the dragon said, and the monkeys will not let anyone through. I've been trying to make them let me pass peacefully for days, but they are so unreasonable. Finally, I told them if they did not let me through, I would just force my way. They know I'm big and strong enough to go through without their permission, so when I went to sleep, they tied me up. Why won't the monkeys let anyone pass? Min Lee asked. Because they are greedy things, the dragon said. They've just discovered the peach trees that make up the next part of the forest. The monkeys do not want to let anyone through because they do not want to share the peaches. Even when I promised not to touch any of the fruit, they would not let me through. They do not even want to share the sight of those peaches. Why do you have to go through the forest, Min Lee asked. Can't you just fly over? More tears, the size of lychee nuts, rolled down the dragon's face. I cannot fly, he sobbed. 
I don't know why. All other dragons can fly, but I cannot. I wish I knew why. Don't cry, Minli said, patting the dragon, feeling more sorry for it than ever. I'm going to Never Ending Mountain to see the old man of the moon and ask him how to change my family's fortune. You can come, too, and ask him how to fly. You know where Never Ending Mountain is? the dragon asked. I thought to see the old man of the moon was impossible. You must be very wise to know how to find him. Not really, Minli said. I got the directions from a goldfish.